Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be getting started in about five minutes. So please get settled in, and we're excited to have you here. Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining us. We're gonna be getting started in just a couple minutes. We wanna give everyone a chance to get in and get settled, grab your coffee or tea, and we'll be starting in just a few minutes. Hi there, everyone. Thanks so much for joining. We're going to turn on our cameras and go ahead and get started. <laughs> so good afternoon. My name is Corey Milkey. I am the program coordinator for FACT Oregon. I'm joined today with my friend and colleague, Heather Olivier, and with our fabulous presenter, Shauna Signorini. <laughs> I think I said it right. I almost always say your last name wrong, Shauna. I'm sorry. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're really, really excited to have you all here with us today. Uh, this is definitely unprecedented times, and we're all uh, navigating, managing stress, and trying to build resilience during this time of crisis. So we're glad to see you here. I do want to just let you know a few housekeeping things before we really dig into the presentation and get started. Uh, one of those is that all participants are going to be and attendees are muted. So your microphones are going to be muted and your cameras are off. We're going to be using polls, the Q&A box, and the chat box today. So please feel free to ask questions in those. We certainly want to make sure that you're able to share what's important and engage with us during this afternoon. Um, and then we're going to be asking questions throughout the process. Last, I do want to let you know that this webinar is being recorded and uh, it will be uploaded onto Fact Oregon's webpage along with the materials that we're talking about during this webinar. So just so everyone knows, you will be able to find this later. We'll also be sending a follow up email with some resources and a link to Shauna's webpage so you can learn more about this presentation and the resources Shauna has. So. With that, I definitely would like to introduce my friend Shauna Signorini to get us started on managing stress, building resilience in times of crisis. So um, thank you so much, Corey. I'm so um, grateful to be here and I'm grateful for each of you who are joining us today from all over Oregon. In a few minutes, we'll have a place for you to put, um, sorry, we're doing this from home and somebody's just decided to do their lawn. <laughs> so, um, so yes, so they'll, we'll have an opportunity to do that. I just would love for you to get comfy um, because what we're going through right now is really challenging and really hard. So um, I don't know how this pandemic has affected you, if it's affected you and your family financially, 
um, with jobs, uh, your health, you may have had it, or you know someone who's had it, or possibly even died from it. So um, I just want to say grace to you and grace to each of us um, who are here today. And just to remember that we're all in different places. Um, and so with that in mind, I'd love it if you practice self-care. So if you need a drink, by all means, go get one or a snack. Um, whatever you need to do, please go do that. Uh, but come right back, right? <laughs> because we're only going to be here for a short amount of time. So a poll has just gone up. Um, so please fill that out. Uh, we're looking forward to um, doing more uh, polls. And also we'll invite you to put things in the chat as we go along. So please engage as you are able and want to. Kids and pets are welcome. I have a cat. I'm not sure if she will be getting up or meowing to get in. So I know I'm not alone in that. So, um, so we just really want you to make yourself at home. So, okay. Uh, we have see. just, a, we're gonna give just another 15 seconds or so, and then um, I'm gonna go ahead and launch the poll so we can see how everyone is feeling today. Yeah. So our plan is that we're gonna do uh, just a brief check-in. We're gonna talk about some resilience boosters, empathy, and some calming ideas. We're gonna get really practical and we're gonna use you as well. So if at this time, um, would you go ahead and use the chat to share where you're coming from um, and also the last self-care um, thing that you did. And so today we've got a um, lot of professionals working with families. Thank you for joining us and educators child care providers, we've got some parents. Um, great, self-advocates, welcome. And how are you doing during this crisis? Oh, the majority of us have good and bad days, but feel balanced, that's fantastic. Overwhelmed and manage but manageable and then stressed, that's an understatement. Um, you know, <laughs> and I like that, I have no idea what <laughs> today is, so. Okay, so, um, Paul said he did some writing and blogging today. Krista in Portland does jigsaw puzzles. You are after my own heart. I adore that. Um, spent time drawing in the sun, woodworking. Fantastic. Welcome from Grants Pass. In Bend, went fishing for the first time yesterday. Did you catch anything? That sounds so beautiful. Um, yeah, we're, a lot of us are experiencing grief from not being able to help our students right now. Oh, and you have a puppy. That's so great, Natalie. Uh, welcome, Sharon. We're so glad you're here. And playing Frisbee with the dog. Yay! Gaming. Oh, Les, welcome from Roseburg. And you're riding your bike, doing yoga, going more fishing. Yay. Go for walks with the cats in the woods. Oh, my goodness. That's fantastic. Um, so great. Squirrel and bird entertainment. Fantastic. So it sounds like you guys are all doing some really fun things. Um, it just, it's great. And again, welcome from all over Oregon. And um, if you're from outside Oregon, welcome too. So we are gonna talk about, oh, uh, just a sec. We're gonna talk about um, the window of tolerance a little bit. And this comes from Dan Siegel. And you know, we have stress going on in our everyday lives anyways. And for many of us, we may have um, come into this difficult time with our children or our family in crisis already. And so um, when you have all those things, I mean, it's hard to be a family member, right? It's hard to be a caregiver. It's hard to be um, just to do everything that we need to get done. And then when you talk about the ambient stress of having this um, going on, so ambient, when you think of ambient music, it's just everywhere. And this has affected us. It's affected our everyday lives, our routine. Even if you haven't, you know, contracted it or lost a job or, you know, directly dealt with it, it's affected you. We're all sheltering at home now. Um, and so we are going to um, be on the fight, flight, or freeze continuum that that um, that it's just the way it is so if we normally have a, are a little bit stressed we're going to be a lot more stressed if we normally aren't stressed we're still going to have stress so I love Lindsay Braman's work I'll show several more of her slides while we're doing this 
Um, so she has drawn this great um, illustration about the, the point we want to be is in this middle right here, this learning, listening, loving, um, living our lives. But it's really easy for us to shut down because of the stress or on the alternate side, blow up. And, and I'm sure we've seen that with our loved ones and our children as well. Things that normally wouldn't bother them are really bugging them. So um, just know that that is normal, right? We're going through a great time of difficulty as a world, as a nation, as a region, as a state, as a region, as a city, as families. So it's just as a person, it's just like it all is um, coming into play. So I would just encourage you to give yourself a lot of grace and recognize that this is a stressful time and that it is okay to be stressed. Some people are saying, you know, now's the time to learn a new language or, you know, prepare for the marathon. And the neurobiologists that I've been following say, this is not our most productive time. As a matter of fact, they say, you know, if you're measuring your productivity by your productivity of two or three months ago, they say that world is gone. <laughs> and we will be going through um, periods where we're most likely at, even on a good day, about 75% productive. And um, it may even go down to 50%. So if that's you, please know that that's normal and that's okay. If you are one of those who's learning French right now, that's awesome. But know that that is not the normal. So, Corey, uh, can you speak to this in your family? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I actually have an 18 year old son who graduated this year. And so, we're definitely navigating new territory with graduation canceled. And I just actually noticed the other day he was on his computer playing a game, and I and I actually heard the computer slam, which is not his typical. Uh, response to feeling frustrated and so we we went in and did a check-in and he said I'm really bad at the game but I think when it all came down he kind of slumped to the floor and said I'm actually really mad because I'm I don't feel like I have anything else to do and I miss my friends and so um so I think that was really hard and our family's navigating that stress there's some days where things go really well and then of course we have those other days where you know, we have to kind of let the dishes go and play a board game. And that's kind of what we did yesterday. And so I think we're in that same, same boat of navigating and, and, and learning as we go. And you know, Corey, I love that. I love that you checked in because you noticed, hey, this something is, is unusual. Because a lot of times what we would say is, that's an expensive thing to be slamming around, right? And it is. <laughs> But what your, your son needed in that moment is all behavior is communication. And he was communicating in a way that um, through his, his uh, irritability and, and through that. And so I would encourage each of us to look at that um, and take a step back. And, and if we can keep ourselves in the rainbow area so we can step back so that we can say, hey, you know, I noticed this. Um, the other thing that you brought up that I love is some days are survival days. You know, some days it is just good enough to get through. I know when our family has gone through crisis, the, it, you know, dark humor gets you through, right? So we would say, okay, if no one is on the news, <laughs> if no one is in the hospital, no one's in jail, and no one's getting sued, we're having a great day, right? <laughs> So, um, you know, there are days that, that you guys are going to be thriving and things are going to go well and it's going to be excellent, but there are going to be those days where, where good enough is good enough. You know, we don't have to do your best every single day. That would be exhausting. Think about if you had to do your best in making meals every single day, right? If you do a celebration meal, like a wedding or a like you bake a cake for a wedding or you do something special um, for a celebration, that's great to put as much into it as you can or, or want to or have. But as an every day, good enough is good enough. So um, I think Corey and I, you and I were talking about that is what is a win? You know, a win can be getting through the day, you know, just loving each other and just getting through there. So let's go ahead and move on. 
I would be remiss in not talking about some actual resilience boosters, but we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. Um, so these come from uh, Dr. Bruce Perry. Those of you who've heard me speak before know I'm a huge fan of his and have um, studied a lot of his work. And these are the ones that he gave out and they pretty much follow everything that we've seen. I don't know about you, but when somebody tells me all these things, these are all things I know, right? Are these new to you, you guys? Uh, probably not. <laughs> but it's still good to look at them and to revisit them. And so let's just go over them super quick. So daily structure. We don't need to have a set schedule down to the minute. That's rigid, that's stressful for most people. But we do need to have a basic idea of what's going to happen. Um, so Corey, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Do you mind sharing roughly what your schedule looks like for your family these days? Yeah, so it's certainly different than it was when we were attending school and working outside the house. Um, I'm still working full time, so we definitely are managing um, five kids who are in school. So we get up around seven or eight now, which is a little later than during school time. And uh, we get some breakfast together. I have my coffee. Our kids have a cup of hot chocolate. And then we look at what our day will look like. So right now with distance learning, we may have gotten, especially on Mondays, we will have gotten our work for the week. And so we start to plan out our day. We have lunch at noon around that, the same time every day. We have snacks around the same time, around three. We go for a walk before lunch. So. Um, it's not super structured that every minute is, but we've picked out the, the highlights of the day, breakfast, lunch, snack, walks, and family time, and really kept those as structured and routine as we can. That's great. Because the brain, it is always, um, it's always taking in information, right? Um, it's always getting more and more information about what's going on. Is, is the uh, environment safe? And as we talked about with this stress going on and that ambient stress everywhere, it's really easy for us to, um, to get anxious. And so if you give your, if you have a daily structure, if you have a routine, your brain can kind of relax, right? You know what's coming next. And it really is, uh, it, it is our friend. So daily structure is great. Family meals, I think we've got a couple polls that are gonna be going up. Thank you. And uh, family meals are, um, are part of resilience boosting as well. Now, I wanna say though, that it takes more than just a bucket of fried chicken or a pizza to make it be, help um, boost resilience because it needs to be like pleasant um, for your family as well. And I know there were, there were times when meal times were not pleasant for us. Um, and so we needed help. Um, I needed to figure out how could I lower the stress? Um, how could we, or were there things that we could do to make it uh, more enjoyable for each member of our family? And um, let's see, Heather, you're going to be posting some resources over in the chat and uh, go ahead and answer the, the resiliency boosters right now, if you will. And um, those resources are important because you can call those. So like Reach Out Oregon or um, Oregon Family to Family or FACT or um, any of those things. And you can talk to someone who can help you kind of troubleshoot those. And I would encourage you, if you call or reach out and you don't get what you need, keep reaching out. That's resilience, right? Um, and sometimes the first place we ask for help isn't a right fit. And sometimes um, we need to keep, just keep going. So, um, so I would encourage you if you need that help to do that. So the next one is healthy eating. And um, you know, it's really easy in this time of stress. Sweet, salty, and fatty foods do create neurotransmitters. That being said, not all sweet, salty, and fatty foods are good for us. So if we can try to, you know, uh, I, do, I do have more treats in our house than I usually do, but what I'm finding is just having them there makes me feel better. 
or like for cinnamon rolls, I love cinnamon rolls. Um, I have them frozen, so it takes me a little bit of time and it's a little bit of extra work so I can do that. So I'd encourage you to do healthy eating um, however you can. And we have a 211.org um, resource in the chat and they can help find food uh, assistance in your area. And farmers markets are starting up and if you get SNAP benefits and, um, and the Oregon trail card, you can use those in farmers markets. So please reach out and do that. Okay, so limited media. When we're talking about that, we're talking about the news. And in the beginning, many of you may have found it comfortable or comforting to be um, aware of everything that was going on. And then as time has gone on, it's really stressful. <laughs> it might stress you out more. So um, I would encourage you if you are watching the news is to really pay attention. Is it helping you or not helping you? Is there a way you can dose it up into a smaller dose? Um, is it possible for you to do some sort of self-care afterwards? So um, making it routine can be, you know, good if you're doing it with your morning coffee or tea or, um, you know, taking, looking at it and then going for a walk. But um, the information coming out is incredibly stressful. And, um, you know, also there's some amazing stuff out there. Has, have, have you, Corey or Heather, have you caught um, John Krasinski's Good News? It's so much fun. So there's some fun stuff going out there. There's some really good stuff too. So um, reach, oh, exercise is on there and we'll talk more about that. And reaching out to others. Um, we, I have a, a list of self-care things. I guess you can't see it, but <laughs> so um, shelter in place, self-care ideas, and there's some um, ideas on there. Uh, one of my friends asked me to go on Marco Polo, and it is a, you record yourself um, a video text, and then whenever you have time, you go back on it and, and look it up. And so that's been really fun. Um, and it stretched me because I wasn't, I, I wasn't using that before. It also taught me that I can make like little pigtails because I have these cute little things that you can play with and draw and stuff. So that can be fun. Um, uh, there's other activities out there too um, for reaching out and our family, or not our family, but our friend, my friends and I did this um, one that we said, you know, maybe it would be fun if we all came up with something red. And so here's a, a collage I made, nothing is glued down. I just went through and found some of my favorite things and put them together. And uh, someone else made a scrapbook page and uh, one of the, the friends actually, um, if you can believe this, made us all red masks. So it was a really special time. And we're gonna talk more about um, special things um, that we've been doing that's been getting us through too. So helping others, um, if you would go ahead, um, if you would go ahead and put out how you have been helping others, and it can be as simple as a text, it could be a phone call, it could be writing a letter, it might be, you know, I know someone, they're picking up garbage in their neighborhood, um, and then the, the, you know, making masks and uh, 3D printing things, um, lots of things that you can do. Another thing um, that's free for families is if you have, if you know children who are younger than your children, perhaps you wanna um, sanitize the toys and um, let another family use those for a while or a video or something like that. So being there, being present, I agree, that's a great one. Thank you so much for sharing that. Oh, and someone else said they like Marco Polo too. And they're doing Marco Polo with the coworkers and with the youth. Texting friends, exchanging puzzles, that's a great one. Doing the next door app, um, delivering, oh, this is so fantastic, delivering um, to groceries or supplies that they can't find in a store. That has been so challenging. Oh, Leslie, you've been working with legislators on securing additional Medicaid matching funds. Um, oh, and we got the additional match funds confirmed a couple weeks ago. Way to go, doing advocacy, Zoom play dates, fantastic. Oh, helping people get gardens started, that's awesome. Shopping for others who have health issues. It's so, so important, um, you know, 
I, I don't know about you, but in the beginning, I thought, gee, I'm not sure, you know, what I've got to offer, right? And it was amazing, just those small things. Um, not only does it help them, but it also boosts our, our, um, our well-being too. So um, how often, let's go through these polls. So how often do you eat meals together as a family? 55% of you say five to seven or three to five or rarely, and sometimes people say never. So uh, that, that is very varied. Um, I have one of my, um, my daughters lives with us, and, and so sometimes we eat together, but not always because she's doing her own life, even though you know we're, we're sheltering in place. And then I have another daughter that um, she had her birthday and we were able to do a social distance pizza. We each had our own pizza and we were very far apart. So um, do you enjoy eating dinner together? 73% yes, it's a good time for us to connect. 27 said it's neutral and, and we have some who say it's uh, stressful and chaotic. So um, do you limit your media intake? Um, that's interesting. Uh, Corey, can everybody see these? The, the results or is it just me? Okay, so everyone can see them, great. So, um, yep, it looks like everybody, some of us are doing it, some of us aren't. Some of you may not even need to do it, so, okay. So sleep hygiene. Sleep hygiene means what we do to get ready for bed. And um, sleep is so important um, for us to function. It helps our immune system. It is just, I can't say how important it is. So Heather's going to put a resource, one of my favorite resources, Autism Speaks, has a page that gives some great ideas plus a toolkit um, that can help with that. I was sleeping really well up until about a week and a half ago, and then I would wake up and not be able to go back to sleep. So I had to review everything and figure it out. <laughs> and now the way I go to sleep is vastly different from even two weeks ago. So I would encourage you to do that. How about you, Corey? Have you guys had any sleep issues in your family? Oh, we've all had sleep issues. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I think that feels, that feels pretty, pretty normal for us. Uh, we're not even sure the days kind of feel like they're all running together. So we're all definitely trying to adjust to a, a sleep schedule that's been a little tough for us. Yeah. So um, if you, again, if you need any um, assistance with that, Oregon Family to Family Health Information Center um, can also provide some assistance with that. So positive thoughts. Um, you know, one of my, um, if you've heard me speak before, you've heard me speak of my uh, wonderful 86 year old friend from Germany who lived through World War II. So she's seen some things and she's one of the most positive people I know. Her saying right now is, we're another day closer to the end of the pandemic. Isn't that wonderful? And I just love that um, because each day we are one step closer. So yes, uh, we, resources will be sent out at the end of this. So yes, thank you. So um, if you have any positive thoughts that are getting you through this, would you please post them in the chat? Um, my mom's favorite one is this too shall pass, and she's right. <laughs> um, another positive thought that we can have, oh, someone uses post-it notes, that's great. Um, another uh, positive thought that, uh, that we can have is that, um, is that we're in this together, because we are. Whether we want to be or not, we are. So it is a... Um, I, I wouldn't wish this on anyone. <laughs> so, um, but one thing is that we all are. It's, you know, when we experience trauma, um, sometimes we experience it alone. But even though we have our own individual experiences of this, this is a collective trauma. So as we move forward, we'll all have our own um, individual memories of it and that kind of thing. But if you say, do you remember the COVID-19 pandemic, I'm pretty sure all of us are going to say yes. So that being said, um, I want to talk a little bit about resilient kids because resilient, resilient kids are made by stress and adults who are able to support those children through it in the way the children need it. So um, if you look at this with this uh, 
little boy and this man, um, you can see that he's stressing his new um, found ability. He doesn't even look like he's been walking that long, right? Let alone long enough to be going up a, a tree like that. But he is learning balance and he's also learning that there is an adult there who cares about his safety and there's um, someone there for him. And I wanted to share, many, many parents are concerned during this time that how's this going to affect our kids, right? Because their whole routine has been upended. They're not able to see their friends. Academically, they're getting behind. And I just want to remind you that academically, you can learn to read and do math into your 90s or 100s, right? So this, um, this is a little blip and um, we'll get academics and school figured out as uh, you know, this goes on and we figure out the, the virus and how to keep people safe and how to keep our teachers and our educator, education workers safe as well as the students, obviously. So those things will be worked out. One of the things that, that is best taught young is relationship and, um, and meeting needs and, and caring for each other. And so if right now um, your, your students who are at home can get those relationships with you or maybe even their teachers if they're doing some, some distance learning, I think I call it distance connecting rather than distance learning. Um, when we talked about the window of learning, it's not when we're stressed out. And so right now is not the most conducive time to learning. Um, it's going to be harder to learn and harder to keep it um, So uh, in, in there. So I would encourage you not to stress out about the academics. Um, I would also encourage you to know that that what we consider to be difficulty may not be for, for your child. Um, when I was uh, in first grade, I got very sick. I spent a month in the ICU. I had multiple surgeries and I was oh, a state away from my community. And sometimes I was away, I was away from my brother and sister for that long and, um, and my, my parents, I didn't have, uh, one of them was usually there, but not always. So it was a very painful time if I think about it, but that's not what I think of. When I think of that time, my first thought is pop-up books and cards from my community and Hawaiian punch because that is what happened. Uh, that's, that's the support I got. And I, would, I, would, I know for a fact that you're building memories with your children right now. Um, you're doing things that you normally wouldn't do um, and those are the things they're going to remember. Those are the things that they are going to um, reflect on first. They probably will be able to think back about how scary it was or if, um, you know, other things that ha are troubling them. You know, when they think of graduation, if they aren't able to graduate right now, they may think of how disappointed they were, but they may also remember the pictures that were taken in the yard or the, the drive-by parade that they got. Um, so uh, I would like to cut to you, Corey, and have you speak on this. So what would you like to share? Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, the thing that I'm thinking about, and again, you know, I have five kids, so they're all, we're all navigating things in very different ways. And I think the thing that I would share was just remembering to your, to kind of what you were saying, Shauna, that we all respond really differently. So one of my kids really, really um, likes to kind of get his space and he likes to come to us. And so we use text format. So we might do text check-ins because he, and then he knows when and how to come to us later. Um, for my son who's graduating, we've been doing a lot of social distancing, but he was able to have one good friend over who's been doing some social distancing and they took pictures together in their cap and gown mm. so that we could celebrate, um, celebrate his graduation. So we're just finding all those different ways and we're really making the focus on how do we connect and how do we build and recognizing that sometimes we sit with feeling bad, that this doesn't feel good. Right. And then we acknowledge that and start to think about, so what can we do in this time until we can do something different mm -hmm. and really start pulling those pieces. And I think that's created kids who are, um, who we're starting to see settle in this and starting to feel like we can get to the other side. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. And those pictures were great, by the way. <laughs> they were very fun. Um, so yeah, there are, you know, our kids wouldn't grow without stress. Um, there's three types of stress. There's manageable stress that we can just kind of get through on our own. It raises our heart rate. Um, and we're able, but we're able to get things down. Um, and then there's a uh, tolerable stress where you have adults or caring individuals who are able to support you through it, parents too. I, I, uh, I, I have teenage or I had teenagers and I thought I was the best supporter for them. <laughs> and sadly, um, sometimes I wasn't able to be that one. And so um, if you hear me say adults, supporters, parents, um, it's not because we don't want to be. Sometimes it's just really hard for our kids to accept our support. So that's a whole other webinar, Corey, isn't it? A whole other webinar. So, um, so, um, but, but I want to just reiterate that the support we give to them is the support that they need in that moment. And, um, and that the, the intolerable stress or toxic stress is stress when you can't get away from it. And so I want to um, just say that there are times, and I'm hoping that none of you are in this situation, but we might need help um, with uh, interpersonal violence or, or things like that. Um, Heather's going to put something in the chat um, about the Oregon Coalition. And if you go on there, they are able to help all over the state. So thank you for putting that up. Okay, so we are going to go to the next slide. I am sorry, this is, ugh. I'm having a hard time moving my chat around. There we go. Okay, so empathy, here we go. So we happen to have two graduates in our family as well. And I was listening to a podcast, not theirs, talk about it. And they said, you know, older people, boomers, I believe it was <laughs> what they said is, we know that in light of a world pandemic, not getting to have our graduation celebration and activities is not the end of the world, right? We understand that. And yet they still are experiencing loss. They're still grieving. They saw their upperclassmen or maybe heard stories from their families or parents or, or went to um, friends or families' graduations as they were growing up. And they were looking forward to it. They were looking forward to an all-night party. They were looking forward to, you know, throwing their mortar board up in the air or who knows what it was that they were looking forward to. And so it's really easy for us as adults to say, oh, you know, that's, yeah, that, that, yeah, we get it, but, you know, get over it, right? Because there's bigger things going on. So I would encourage you to slow down and to ask yourself, how would you feel? And we can always give validation. We can always say, I hear you saying, you talking about that, you know, I, I have experienced loss like that. I have experienced loss, but um, I'm sorry, I've experienced loss and that sounds like you're, you know, that's really hard. If you keep digging down, maybe you find out that it was their friends that they wanted to spend time with, or it might be the big cake that they were looking forward to. And it's possible, you know, you can't fix the graduation situation for your child, but you can help them through this. So you would be able, you might be able to say, um, you know what, we can't do that, but what if we got, we sent cupcakes to each of your friends and did, you know, either a Zoom party or a Netflix share or did some sort of a video gaming night or something so that you were celebrating together. Again, it's not the same and no one's saying it is. We, we realize that's not what, you know, these, these young people said, you know what I really want? I really want a Zoom party <laughs> for graduation. But right now, there's only certain things we can do. So um, I, oh, before we go on, um, Lifehack has this interesting activity. So I want you to take your um, non-dominant hand, so the hand you do not write with, and we're going to snap five times. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five. Now I want you to draw an E on your forehead. Everybody draw an E on your forehead. Okay, so which way did your E face? Did your E face to the left side 
or did your E face to the right side? So looking at that lets you know if you were thinking of somebody looking at you, so doing it for someone else, or were you doing it for yourself? And so um, there is no right or wrong, but it's just kind of an interesting thing that, you know, we have to put ourselves, if we are doing it for someone else, we would need to put it in a, in a different perspective. So if you wanna to go to that, um, that they have some other things on there that's kind of interesting on perspective taking. And actually on our sheet, it talks about um, taking other people's perspective and really kind of doing a journey. We can never know fully what someone else experiences. Um, you could have identical twins and they would have a totally different experience. Um, they'd probably tell a story differently. So, uh, but, but ask yourself, how would you feel about that? Okay, so this again is Lindsay Braman's work. Um, and this is just expanding that window of tolerance a little bit more. Um, I, I like that she puts where growth happens and optimal functioning is in the rainbow. <laughs> I think that's great. But notice like if you are asking your child or your partner or yourself to do something and you or they don't do it, it might be because they're shutting down. You know, um, the fight, flight, or freeze. Um, freeze is a real thing. So I would encourage you, first of all, to evaluate where you are, to check in with yourself regularly. Do you shut down more? Are you in that optimal functioning, the rainbow? Or are you finding yourself panicking? And if you are, how can you do things that calm you down? So we're gonna look at that more fully right now. So here's some calming ideas at home. Again, please download that sheet. These, I have links for things in there. So um, we're gonna go over these briefly and then we'll look at that more um, as we move forward in the PowerPoint. So a sensory diet, and that may or may not include food, but that means getting sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, um, feel, as well as proprioception, so knowing where you are in time or space interoception, which is knowing what you need, so identifying emotions or hunger or that kind of thing. Um, so I have a, on that resource sheet, there's a sensory diet um, activities. It connects to 50 of them, so uh, lots of things. Sometimes um, you will have the ingredient, most of the time you'll have the ingredients at home. Many of you have had that, uh, the sensory clay. I don't know if you've had the sensory Play-Doh. Someone said you can make an interesting one by using flour, and this is gross, but like baby oil <laughs> or some sort of oil. And so you can make things in the kitchen um, if you don't have them. So focused breathing, and we will look at, uh, at we'll do that in a minute. Um, on the sheet, there's a really good one. It has a circle that expands. You breathe in and then you breathe out with it. So uh, be sure and check that out. Body work. And that can be a little more challenging right now because if you are one that um, does get physical therapy or chiropractic or massage um, somewhere else, it can be really, um, we aren't doing that right now. So uh, for the most part, um, so because of, oh, corn starch and conditioner, that sounds like fun. I might try that later. <laughs> so, um, so those are things that you're going to have to do at home and, and the person gets to decide what is their self-care. So if you look at any of these and you go, ooh, yuck, that's not your self-care. So even the, um, you know, even the biggest self-care guru could um, tell you this is what you need to do. And if it's not something that appeals to you, it's not yours. So sometimes it might be really good for you. Like let's say healthy eating and you're like, ooh, I don't wanna do healthy eating. Maybe it needs to be, you know, kind of tweaked a little bit. Maybe it needs some um, something else uh, added to it or, um, you know, just barriers removed. Again, using those resources at the, that will be shared um, that, that Heather has been putting up, you can reach out to folks and they can help with that. Um, so I have Qigong and tapping. So tapping is the emotional freedom technique. There's a link on there. It basically uses acupuncture or pressure um, and affirmations to help you. And 
you know, my, um, one of my, my daughters, I told her about it because you, you assign a number between one and 10 for like your anxiety or your pain level or your depression and you tap through it and you keep tapping several times. I think it takes like one and a half to two minutes each cycle until you get it down to a tolerable level. Well, she being a teenager was like, yeah, right, mom, like tapping is really going to help. About six months later, she came and she said, it works. <laughs> so I would encourage you to look that up and try it. And if you don't like, oh, good, someone taps every day. Um, if you don't like uh, the link that I've provided, Google it. There's lots of ones out there. So exercise. Patterned repetitive activity. Again, going back to the brain, your brain knows what to expect when you're doing patterned uh, repetitive activity. So whether you're biking, walking, running, um, bouncing a ball, doing yoga, any of those things, um, that can be really helpful. So mindfulness, um, I would encourage you to um, to be thinking about your thinking. They call that um, meta thinking. Um, and that's being mindful. Um, you know, this is a really challenging time. And so if you find yourself shooting or shaming yourself, please don't do that <laughs> because there's no right way to get through this. Um, it's different for all of us. We all are in different places. Some of us have lost support workers. Um, some of us have lost friends and family, whether it is physically to the virus or um, or just being able to see them. Um, many of us have lost our, I, I would say almost all of us have lost supports of some kind. So um, just be mindful of that and um, be really kind to yourself and really nice about that. So Corey, would you like to share anything about uh, mindfulness? Yeah, I think that in, in just my thoughts around mindfulness and just remembering just uh, sometimes I feel a little overwhelmed with so much going on and I actually have to, somebody said something about post-it notes and those positive mm -hmm. things. I have to remind myself to just breathe and that it's okay and that it doesn't have to look a certain way. And so mindfulness is finding those ways to really allow myself to, to get that space. Yeah. So there's one, um, there's one activity, I believe they do it in DBT or dialectical behavioral therapy. And I think it's called 555, but who has time for five, right? <laughs> actually, I find myself saying, you actually do have time now. <laughs> but what you do is you look and you find um, five things that you can see, five things that you can hear, and five things um, that you can feel, I believe. And then you count down in, in your area, you do four, four things that you hear, see, feel, and you keep working down until you get to one. And that, that gets us out of our mind and into our bodies. And you know what I love is that anything that's good for the, the body is good for the brain uh, and vice versa. So that's really um, fantastic. Oh. Uh, Ashley put mindful nature walks or what I do, focusing on the senses in nature and focus on the now. So yes, that's so important. That's so great. Just stopping and taking a deep breath and, and feeling, you know, where you are there. But you can even do that. You know, we could do that right now. Let's go ahead and do that. I want you to, in your seat, I want you to sit back and I want you to, if your shoulders are up or you're stressed, I want you to just put those shoulders down a little bit. I want you to just take a deep breath in and hold it right there and then breathe out. We're going to breathe in and now we're going to breathe out. Now I want to, you to just, with your eyes closed or open, it's up to you to think about where you are in your body or is there something that you're feeling pain with? Are you feeling hungry? Thirsty? Are you tired? Do you feel like you could use a hug? So if you, uh, if you can, would you please reach one arm across to the opposite shoulder and then the other arm across to the opposite shoulder and squeeze as tight as you're able or want to. 
And we're gonna take another deep breath in and breathe out. And then slowly let go, okay. So even doing something as simple as that can help calm the nervous system. Um, one of the things we did is we crossed the midline, which can be helpful. Another favorite one of mine is spelling things or making the, um, the number eight on its side, or I guess that's the infinity sign, um, and crossing. So that can be super helpful. So art, um, and you know, that is enjoying it. It could be making it. Um, and if you're like me, I'm a very practical person. So I always have to, it has to have a reason, right? And you know what? Art doesn't have to have a reason. You can just do it. Um, coloring for coloring's sake or uh, collage for collage's sake. So music, drama, acting things out. Um, doing acting things out with your, your child can be really fun. If you do the mirror game, you know, where you, you, you do mime and that, that kind of thing, or maybe you make it into exercise where you, you know, do a walk that's like walk as I do. So that could be fun too. Um, another calming idea is compression clothing or, and, or weighted blankets. Yes. And I wanted to share with you. Um, I found this, it's a compression sleeve that they use on people after surgeries and things. And in medical supply places, you can buy it by the uh, foot. And so these are a lot cheaper if you wanna make a, buy a sleeve or use one on the legs. Um, that can be fun. You could also have them decorate it with Sharpies too, um, you know. Give, their, give a temporary tattoo to their sleeve, right? There's always, you know, you can purchase compression clothing. Um, you can also buy Under Armour that is slightly too small. Um, wearing small clothes uh, might be something that, that provides that pressure as well. So uh, weighted blankets, um, I love, always love afghans, especially if they're made by somebody or it has a memory associated with it. Like maybe you went garage sailing um, oh my gosh, now how's that for a loss? <laughs> Is anyone else missing thrift stores and garage sales like me right now? We will get back to it, right? And we're going to appreciate it so much more. So I can't wait for that day. So um, yes, yeah, so weighted blankets and know that when you get these, it's not they may not, you or they may not wear them every day, but on those hard days, it might be helpful. So Breath work. Oh, don't you wish you were there popping all those bubbles? <laughs> so there's bubbles. You can blow balloons. You can uh, do pinwheels. And, you know, if you make a pinwheel, make a, 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 a square and cut the middle and then put the two sides in with a thumbtack or some kind of a, a pin and then you can blow it. Super fun. And then focus breathing. Um, Breathing in for three, holding it for four, out for six. Uh, there, if you add a mantra in this, so when you breathe in, so you could breathe in and you can be saying to yourself, I am, hold it for four, and then out for six at peace. That can actually be a little bit of a meditation that you can do in, let's see, about 15 seconds is what they say, but that looks like 13 to me. <laughs> so. Okay, another one, um, uh, we're gonna use our chat to share your favorites. Um, things that have been your go-tos during this time. I know me um, being able, I haven't gone on many drives, but when I do, I like to turn on the music really loud and sing. Um, I think my family appreciates it that I do it on a, on a drive by myself. <laughs> But singing karaoke um, that you can get off YouTube can be super fun. Like I was talking about Marco Polo. Checking in um, has been one of my favorite go-tos as well, is just checking in and asking myself, you know, how are you doing? Like, I know that sounds silly, but, uh, you know, in our daily life, we get so busy. We get so busy as we're caring for our uh, children, as we're caring for those um, that we love, our partners. And you know, still working and doing that. So I'd encourage you to check in with yourself. Um, simple things like keeping uh, water near you so you can hydrate. Oh, look, a glass of wine at the end of the day and bath. That's so awesome. Um, so even keeping hydrated can be a, a simple act of self-care. Um, I've showed you before my um, aroma 
therapy that every so often I just like to take and do. It goes past the amygdala, which is our fear center of our brain, and so it can help us calm down. So let's read some of the chat. So trying to identify as many animals on a walk as I can and then beating my record from the day before, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, music, walking, yoga, playing music. Oh, outside fires with the family. Uno and pool online, writing, blogging, checking in with uh, herself when walking, fishing, um, playing with your pets and your dog, games, riding your bike. Yeah, so many things. Um, Corey, how about you? What has been your go-to? My go-to has actually been getting up and having a cup of coffee when it's quiet. Uh, so my go-to has been trying to recognize that for me, I really need to set a tone for the day. And so mm -hmm. my go-to is ensuring that every day I'm able to do that. That's been one. And then the other has been lighting candles. So I, I really love smells. And, and so when I can't get outside, I've been bringing the sense that I miss inside to me and lighting candles and just mm -hmm. sitting with the aromas. Mm -hmm. That is, I love that. That's so great. Um, when I also have one special candle that I use and when somebody I care deeply for is, um, is going through a hard time, I light a candle and I just keep it going all day. Um, it's, in a, it's in a salt thing, so it, <laughs> it's not a fire hazard. So that as I, it's like it's, I'm thinking of them all day. So, yes. Okay, uh, we are, um, I wanted to show Let's see, let's go ahead. We'll go ahead to the next one. So the calm down box, um, this can be really helpful. Um, things that are, that, that your child likes. Um, the TheraBand, those are things that you typically get from the, the physical therapist, but you can buy them at Target or any kind of place. Um, so putting these all together in a bowl or a box or an area can be really helpful. And we've got a nice little um, poll here asking, does your child have a calm down box or a calm down space? And then do you have a calm down box or a calm down space? So let's go ahead and do um, the, the poll on that um, because these things, it's so nice when you have them all just ready to go. And I always keep pipe cleaners um, and fidget toys together. I love paper or tissue to tear up. A lot of times when I'm doing a training, uh, a mom or a dad or a caregiver will come and say, they just like to tear things up. And it's like, great, then give them something to tear up. You know, uh, The kids' scissors and paper to cut up. When I was teaching preschool, we would do these really interesting lines or spirals or things like that, and that was really fun for them too. So I think the poll's gonna end soon. Um, so these are just some ideas. Um, it, I got it from Solving Behavior, and they're an ABA place, and I'm not sure how you feel about ABA, so I can't bet the whole site, but um, I really did like these ideas. So. Um, and sorting can be really calming as well. They had the Lego and the building materials uh, written up there. Sorting can be super, um, super uh, relaxing. So does your child have a calm down box? Let's look at that. Not yet, but it's on my list now. No, and look, ah, 27% have it. And I don't think this will help my child. That is so smart to know your child. So sometimes people will give you an idea and it's like, not for us. So um, I love it that we are the ones who are, who are the, uh, who understand our child the best. You are the expert. And then do you have a calm down space for yourself? Nope, never thought about it. I've tried, it does get invaded. Yes, people say, ooh, this looks like, this looks so cozy. This is where I want to be. Um, and yes, it keeps me going. Um, I would love to hear what your calm down, um, uh, your calm down uh, space or boxes. Someone says their calm down box has many of the same things that are on the list for the young, the younger kids. Um, I have to say that too. I um, I have a lava lamp type thing that I turn upside down and it goes and it just is so soothing. I do love um, this idea of oddly satisfying, and on the book on the um, 
on that sheet that I have, there's a, a, a link towards, it says, look at something interesting. And there's a link that has that. Um, it's just stuff. It's, I don't know. Have you, Corey, have you looked at oddly satisfying things before? Yeah. And I, it's oddly satisfying. It's absolutely oddly satisfying. <laughs> and I watch them with my kids. They introduced me to um, some of them. So it's very oddly satisfying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, is, yeah. So, um, and speaking of that, you know, we've been talking about art and about um, things. I will actually, let me show you this one thing first. So this is uh, Lindsay's, um, her thing on uh, sleep. And I just really appreciate um, if you can't sleep, you can go through this whole thing. It tells you what to do with your um, your phone if you're having a hard time turning it off. Some people find it helpful to leave it in a different room. Leave your bed, deep breath, deep breathing. Sleep podcasts, I found that um, that there, there are many that are free. So if you look at your podcasts on your phone, you might be able to find those. So I'm going to go ahead and get off this one. And this person, uh, his name is John Foreman, and he is an artist. And we now talk about satisfying, right? Oddly satisfying. He does, that's him. He does, he just goes out in nature. He's a land artist. And these things are not going to last forever, right? Just uh, organizing. There's some leaves and um, yeah. So I would encourage you looking at this can be great, but maybe even going out in the yard or your neighborhood and collecting rocks and organizing them. Um, it could be kind of fun too. So does anyone else find that, that particular thing oddly um, uh, satisfying? Good. Okay. So we're going to come back here and I'm going to have to get us back from the current slide. There we go. Okay. So our next steps, uh, uh, lighted toys. Okay. So I want to go back into the box. So in the, the backyard, garden, anywhere, nature, stress balls. You can make stress balls by putting flour inside of a, a, a balloon and you can make your own like that, sitting by a warm fireplace, warm baths or hot tubs. Yes. Oh, it sounds so good. Wonderful. So the next steps, be kind to yourself. Be extra kind to yourself during this time and to those that, that you love. Um, we will get through this, right? You, you have got this. <laughs> you can do this. Um, practice self-care. So recognize routine. Recognize when um, you're doing things and it's like, oh, this is, I see that this is a routine and appreciate that for your brain. Uh, you know, we're going to calm down. <laughs> We're going to do the same thing. Um, do sensory activities for yourself and also for your children um, and for the people around you. Um, take those sense that sensory diet. Um, get it, you know, enhance it. Um, take a sensory snack, and also get help for yourself if needed. Um, there are counselors available. Um, you can get help if you're. You may have an employee assistance program that it might offer free or reduced um, mental health uh, services. You, it's telehealth for the most part right now. And um, there are also those, those lines. So Reach Out Oregon has um, an 800 number. For youth, Youth Era has a virtual drop-in. They have peer support by switch and by um, text and using all those different things. So please um, check out Lines for Life and see what they have. And you know, um, a lot of us said that we have our good days and bad days. And so, you know, print those out, um, print it out on a post-it and keep it there and, and call because there are days that are going to be hard, right? There's days that are gonna be good. And you know, when expect the bumps on the road, it's uh, can be expected, right? This is going to, we're gonna go up in the air sometimes and our, going to come back down and hopefully all our wheels are on there. If not, we'll ask for help. Um, but we are in this together. And I really want to just say thank you so much to FACT um, for having me today and for being there. One of the things I forgot to do for self-care is sign up for workshops. So go to uh, FACT Oregon, go to the Autism Society of Oregon, um, go to Swindells and do that. 
um, reach out to people, reach out to the organizations, they're there. And I don't know about you, Corey, but when I have seen familiar faces, it makes me happy. I get this little reward system neurotransmitter thing happen. And so I would encourage you to reach out um, as, as much as you can. So we are going to, I'm gonna open it up to Corey and then we're gonna open it up to questions. So go ahead, Corey. Um, I just wanna say thank you so much. Please reach out. You're exactly right when I um, have our staff meetings and I see my friends on Zoom, mm -hmm. I get to feel really excited. When I see you, Shauna, we've been mm -hmm. planning this for a couple of weeks and we've been doing it with Zoom. So it's just really nice and it kind of creates some sense of um, purpose and remembering that um, I'm doing something and I have some really good things. So I really do appreciate that. And I wanna say to everyone, thank you so much. We will open yes. it up for questions but we so appreciate you joining us today and being here and sharing what's working for your family so other families can think about that. Um, you will be receiving a follow-up email with all of the resources and these will be on our website as well. So I just wanna make sure everyone knows um, where and how to get that um, information. So we'll make sure you get all of this. And then with that, we definitely wanna open up to questions or other comments that you wanna share. Please feel free to type those in the uh, Q&A box or in the chat box and we'll talk about that. So I, this isn't my daughter's sleep chart, but it is, uh, it could be, it's super helpful. If you go to lindsaybranham.com, um, she's not on Facebook. Uh, she's on Instagram and I, Pinterest, I think. So, but if you go there, you'll be able to find her. Um, she has a Patreon account. Um, I support her. I would encourage you to, to support those artists that, that you like as well. I just think it's super helpful, you know, um, because when you can't sleep, oh my goodness, <laughs> it's so hard. So, oh, I have a website. Um, so I'm at shaunasignorini.com. If you go to resources, I have resources around Oregon, and then I have COVID-19 resources. And under that, um, Dr. Bruce Perry, for those of you who follow his work um, with the Child Trauma Academy and the Neurosequential um, Network, he has been doing office hours and videos, and that's listed um, under the COVID uh, resources. And then you can download today's, um, today's uh, um, PowerPoint and today's uh, in the self-care for during the shelter in place. So, oh, there I am right there. So I just, again, it's just been a pleasure to see all the things that you're doing out there. You know, when I think of self-care, we all know, right? We all know, and we do things. And I think when we recognize we're doing it, it's like this double effect because number one, you're getting the good of, of, of what you're doing, but number two, you're accomplishing something you've set out to do. You know, you've accomplished this, uh, taking care of it, of yourself. The other thing that's so important is we're modeling for our children, right? We're modeling because we want them to be able to take care of themselves, to be able to soothe themselves and comfort themselves as much as possible. And so when they see us um, either get overwhelmed and just say, I'm overwhelmed, I'm gonna sit over here and I'm gonna breathe for, you know, five minutes, or I'm going to uh, drink my favorite tea. By the way, this is strawberry tea. I love strawberry sun tea. It's so, so good. Um, you know, um, when we were going through the resilience boosters, I, I didn't want to, honestly, I, I thought I shouldn't even do this because we all know these things. And yet, I think that it's important for us to review them um, regularly and just say, how am I doing on this? Because it's really easy to slide. I know I do. So um, I'm not seeing any questions. Um, Corey, what's your next training coming up? At uh, so we're doing this again tonight at six. So for anyone who wants to share with your friends that need to hear this um, information, please come back, have them join us at six. So that's one. And then on May 18th, we're gonna be doing um, distance learning and little ones. We're gonna actually go through our toolkit to really share for uh, those younger kiddos or families with younger kiddos who are navigating um, early intervention or, or early childhood special education. 
Okay. We have a good question. Um, this is a tough question for us, but what would be a good way to reduce stress when organizations and people are demanding your time and effort when you have a child with special needs and that, that need these programs and organizations? Um, so, Michael, if I understand, uh, how do you reduce the stress for yourself? Um, you know, I, I think it's setting boundaries and dosing. So some, if I'm understanding your, your question, um, if I'm not, feel free to retype it in there. So uh, dose it. So um, I applaud Leslie for his uh, tireless advocacy and getting the enhanced funding through Medicaid, like, woohoo, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, you know, I, would imagine that, Leslie, you have a pretty solid uh, self-care that you do. I've met you in person, and I'm pretty sure that you do things um, to make sure that you're, you're functioning well. So I remember when someone said becoming an advocate, when, if you're going to become an advocate, you need to do two things. You need to learn to have boundaries and strong self-care. And I was like, well, don't you need to learn to speak and don't you need to, you know, learn how to do your, you know, elevator speech, but really it's all about asking yourself, can I do this today? Um, because there are some days where you're going to say, I just can't, you know, I was actually talking to my own um, primary care provider or no, not my primary care provider, but a specialist. And, and they were saying, you know, you should advocate in this way. She said, I know you can do this. And I said, you know, I can. Right now, I just don't want to. <laughs> and it's okay to not want to. It's okay to take stock and say, this is more than I have right now. You know, I don't have the energy. I know for me, my buffer is really small. So as long as things go right and go well, I'm able to pull it off. <laughs> But I, if something goes wrong, I find I'm shorter. You know, I, uh, I started to just kind of laugh because my husband and I were just like really snippy and testy with each other over things that we normally wouldn't. And so I, I would realize at that point, um, I, either I need to do some self-care, right? And I need to get my, you know, my breathing. I need to get myself back down or I need to not be part of the situation. So, um, you know, as far as helping people understand, um, I think Bruce Perry's videos are really good. And if you want to email me directly, um, there might be a few that I can point you to if you're trying to talk to different programs um, about stress and how it's affecting us. Um, you know, in Canada, <laughs> they have some things really, they do trauma-informed care in Canada really well. One of the things they set out is they put everybody on the same um, connection. So like everybody's doing Zoom or everybody's doing Adobe Connect or, or Google Hangouts or whatever. Um, I remember talking to you, Corey, and I think how many platforms did you have to learn for your five children? Was it three? Oh, more than that. I think I had to learn seven, seven different platforms for the different programs my kids are navigating. So, you know, if there's, if there's something that, you know, if we could just advocate for folks, uh, you know, to understand how challenging it is and, you know, they want to engage parents. And I think if we have the same mantra, you know, it would be easier to be engaged if we were all on the same platform you know, and call monotone broken record, but that's just my thought. So Michael, um, let me read through this again. So the other thing is some people are going to understand your situation and some people are never gonna get it, right? And I've talked about this before and it's sad because these are caring people. These are people who wanna help, who really care about your children and your family and you, but they may never understand your situation. And I'm sorry for that, and it may not change. It may not change until they go through something or they may never get it. And so one of the self-care things that I like to do is be involved with other families who do get it. So hanging out with the family networks, um, getting involved with other peer organizations like Autism Speaks or um, United Cerebral Palsy of Oregon. Um, there's so many wonderful organizations out there um, that 
they do understand. And you know, in an ideal world, everybody would get it. And eventually we'll get there, right? I mean, think of the, the things that have happened that you've seen come along with that advocacy piece. But um, for right now, we really have to measure, is this worth it? Is this worth it for me? Is it worth it for my family? Is it something I have the capacity to do? And if not, honor that, right? Honor that because at some point you're gonna be raring to go and you're gonna be able to use your story from right here and right now and today to influence policy tomorrow. And I just, and if I could jump in really quick, cause I think Please that's so, so, so true. And I would just say one of the things that I noticed is that there was a time period where uh, three of my kids had referrals, all three for speech, all three for physical therapy, all three for OT, and all three for mental health. So in one week, we could have upwards of 15 appointments a week. And, um, and so it really did, Michael, feel like people were pulling my time everywhere and that I no longer had a say in what our family looked like and where those fun things were happening. And so what I, what my family did is we actually got together and sat down and said, this feels really overwhelming for us. What about you? And we heard from our kids. Yeah, this is actually, I feel like I'm never playing. And so I see you're exasperated. Yes. Right. And so what we did was we actually sat down with those therapists and said, it is too much and it is not sustainable. So what is our priority right now as a family? What is the thing that we think needs to work on and maybe we determined that that was speech and for physical therapy then we went on walks and we asked them to help us find those natural places where we could incorporate what we were practicing and so we weren't being pulled because now we were in control of our time and i think um, as hard as that can be sometimes it is having that conversation and saying help us and when this other thing is done let's revisit this and see where we're at but when you're feeling like you're being pulled all those different days really working with your family and saying what is the vision that our family has and what is our priority and letting other people's expectations kind of sit off to the side for right now until you're ready to start having those conversations again. And I think that was so powerful for our family, for someone to say to me, it is okay to do that. Because I thought somehow I might have been missing out on doing something for my child, right? Somebody says my child might need therapy. Um, I may not be doing the right thing as a parent, but what I really needed to hear was that I'm doing exactly what my child needs by recognizing when and how I could offer the support. And if I'm burnt out, then they weren't getting the best of me. Exactly. And this, you know, parenting a child with special health needs or a um, disability, it's a marathon, right? And our marathon has just gotten really a lot harder with, um, you know, sheltering in place and the, and the virus and everything. And so we may have to say, you know what, this is on the back burner for now. I think, um, I think there's only a few things that you don't, that, that, that you can put off. Um, so like, I think hearing, um, so like getting the help when, when you have a hearing issue in the beginning, I think it's really important to be right on that. And then there's uh, some physical stuff that if you don't do it and don't build that in right away, it's really hard to, to get that back. However, oh, I like that Leslie just said, yeah, it just turned it into an uphill marathon like the San Francisco marathon, <laughs> yes. However, but there are a lot of things that you could, you can catch up on, you know, um, that you can just say, you know, we're gonna put it off. In an ideal situation, you talk to your primary care provider and have that, uh, you know, have them talk to them and, and say, would you figure out which is the most important? If we only had to do one, what should we do? Or, or if, um, is there a way that, that we can, you know, combine it all and make it, uh, make it like, instead of three different um, occupational therapy appointments, can we do, you know, one, or can we schedule them all at the same time? Or, you know, um, are, what, what are the things we can do? Because you're right, um, you could just spend all the time running around to the therapy um, appointments and taking care of those things. And then, you know, the part of being a kid is having that time, you know, to be a kid and to hang out. <laughs> so 
Yeah, um, I really appreciate, thank you for sharing that. So, it, any other? Okay. I do Cosmic Kids Yoga, which is on Amazon Prime for free. It's a fun way to engage with my kiddos. We all do it in a way we can. One of my children is in a wheelchair, so it's fun to help her participate with my other kiddos in a way she can on a foam mat or her chair. That is awesome. Um, you know, doing uh, yoga together is just, oh, it's fantastic. One of the things I love about um, yoga and about things like Tai Chi and that kind of thing is, you can do it now during the pandemic. <laughs> you can do it, you know, they can grow up and do it in their 20s and then they can do it in their 30s and 40s. And maybe, you know, if they have grandchildren, they can say, you know, I remember doing the mountain pose with my family during this time where we had to stay in. And it's something that they carry those memories with. So, um, yeah, so that can be one of those, those good ones. Oh, Cosmic Kids does it like a children's story. It's very, very colorful too. Um, I think there were a couple, um, a couple of those on YouTube as well. So if you want to YouTube children's yoga, that's that's a really fun one. So, okay. I think this looks great. We don't have any other questions coming in. So mm -hmm. with that, I want to say thank you so much, Shauna, for joining oh. us. Yes. My pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for having me. And really, thank you for giving your day today to hang out with us. It's been a pleasure. And, oh, um, Corey or, and I are going to work together to get the, um, these notes. And we're going to combine them with the evening ones as well. And we won't have your names <laughs> or where you're from. Um, but we will share um, the information um, so that you'll have these. So Cosmic Kids will be shared. Uh, with you and all the other great ideas, the nature walks and being mindful. So thanks so much, everybody. Take care. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.